Hi, Russ here. Hey, welcome back to my shop. I'm going to start off my series now of the Legacy Ornamental Mill, the overhead router milling machine. Um, I just, I am part of a group, Google group, for Legacy um, Woodworking Owners. Um, and I've been a member of that for 15 years probably, whenever it first started. And it's been a useful resource for learning how to do some of the things on the uh, legacy over the years. Um, so I've decided to share some of the things that I've done. And I'm going to start off by talking about the legacy in particular. But eventually I'm going to show you how to take all these different ideas that the legacy has and actually be able to build your own legacy type machine, an overhead milling machine. Uh, and chances are you'll be able to build it pretty darn cheap when we get done. But we'll go over that as we go along. So even if you don't own a legacy machine, you might want to watch these, uh, this whole series, because a lot of the things that I show you how you do it on the legacy, we will then take and use those and apply them to building our own overhead milling machine. And so uh, stay tuned. We'll see where that goes. For now, though, the, the, this morning I had a quick conversation reading the uh, Legacy Woodworking Group. I was reading about somebody that built a Z-axis platform for his machine. Um, one thing about the Legacy, it has the Acme thread, 4 TPI thread, on for the X and the Y axis, not the X and the Y axis to control it. And what that means is that this thread here, this knob, controls my uh, Y axis. When I turned it one four turns, it moved it one inch exactly. If I go one turn, it moved it exactly one quarter inch. And so you have really good control on both the X and the Y, uh, the X and the Y axis with the milling machine. But when it comes to the Z axis, when they came out with this machine 15 years ago, the Z axis just, it was, it's horrible. It depends totally on your router. This is the plunge router. This is the one they recommend you buy with it. And I take it and, and you use, you have to plunge it down into your work, lock it down, and hopefully you get it exactly where you want it as you're plunging, you don't go too deep. It was a real pain to use this thing, quite frankly. So it does have a depth stop on it, but I found that even that, it just can be obtrusive trying to use this thing. So what I did was set up something to give me the same control on my Z-axis as you have on your X and your Y. Uh, let's first start thinking about this for a second. This is the same thing as a table router, but upside down. Instead of the router coming up through the table, this is plunging down into your work from above. But if I took this same machine and turned it upside down and put it in a table, you have a router table. And I saw guys that would take that and screw that plate down so that the router can't move. And then they put a scissors jack under it and they crank the scissors jack and that pushes it up. And then they let the spring control or gravity, because they're going down, they let that control the up and down pressure to control the movement on the depth of cut on a router table. Well, the Z-axis on this is the same principle, but upside down. So what I decided that I have the plunge springs on this to help lift it back up. But to go down, what I did was I mounted this three-piece gantry on here. And I put a two-by-four on the back side here and screwed it to it horizontally with a hole drilled in it. And that hole will fit this screw press that came from uh, Shop Fox. It was like 12 and a half, 15 bucks. I think they're around $20 now. And that's the only money I spent on this system. And so uh, the, the height you make this is determined by where the upper, the highest point of your router is when it's all the way up. And I made this so it's a half inch higher than that highest point. And then what I do is I turn the screw down. It's not even fastened to it. Just have a block on there. And I turn it down till it makes contact. And now, as I turn this, the router, I have complete control over 
pressing down. When I go this way, the spring is giving me the control, still making contact for it to come back up. So I, I can now go down until I'm at the right depth for my cut, lock down my router, make my cut, and everything works great this way. And the router will stay put right where it is as long as you've locked this. Don't depend on just the screw to hold it at that height. Use your lock and this will all work fine. I've been using it this way for a couple of years now and this actually works very well. So with that in mind, now I also have figured out that I can control and watch my depth of cut. I can actually control that without any effort. So I know exactly how far I'm going without using this. There's a measuring gauge around to the side on the back side of this router. But I have to tell you, for controlling the depth of cut, it doesn't work very well, quite frankly. So what I did was I just glued a little piece of plexiglass and have it hang over here. And I put some magnets here. So I can just take my little ruler that I carry in my pocket or any six inch ruler metal and it goes against and the magnets hold it in place. Now, let me see if I can zoom in here. Now, if I take this and set it, now I have a bit in here. So let's say I want to do a half inch cut into this piece that I'm putting in my router underneath. When I push this down, it now is making contact to that piece. And I consider that zero. I can take my ruler now and slide it down till it's even to my marker on my plexiglass to the hairline that I got. And now I unlock it, let it come back up. And now when I crank this down, <clears throat> I know that when that comes to zero on that line, I am making contact with that. And now I can take, because I know I'm just now making contact, if I want to make a half inch cut, I can take, drop this down to that half inch, lock down my stop at that half inch, so my plunge depth now won't go any further, raise this back up above zero, slide over my work, turn it on, crank it down till I hit zero, and I know it's starting to make contact to that piece. And I want to do a half inch plunge, but I'm going to do it in two passes. I now can take, crank this down to a quarter inch, lock down my router, go back and forth to make my mortise cut, if that's what I'm doing, come back, make sure I'm tensioned against it, Unlock it, go down that other quarter inch till I get to exactly a half inch, lock it, finish my cut, raise my router back up, out of the way, and I now will have an exact dadle or mortise in that cut, and it's exactly a half inch deep because of the way I set this up for my ruler and everything. So I now have complete control. Sorry about that. I now have complete control of my Z axis simply by buying this little screw and a few pieces of plywood and plexiglass. I now can have complete control over my Z axis on the Legacy. It has been a wonderful improvement on this machine. So if you own the Legacy with a plunge router, you can do the same setup. Now, I just built this and it took me less than an hour to put this together to begin with. And I kind of played with it now for two years. And there's some things I like about it and some things I don't like about it. Uh, for example, I don't like a little harder because of these two boards. It's a little harder to get in there and change out that bit. I can do it, but I don't like it. So I'm going to redo this in very near future, I suspect. And this time I'm going to have just one arm here and then have a plate here for this to mount to. That way this whole side will be completely open. And then I'll take and put my gauge on this side instead of over here so that I can still watch my Z axis uh, and as to how far the travel is. So I don't need it to be quite this bulky, 
but this was a good start. When I built this, I put a piece of a board here and one over here. And there's some screw holes already existing so that I was able to bolt this down. Then I pocket screwed this piece to that piece there. And then put the cross piece in. I put the 2x4 in here for the mounting the screw vise. And that's what I did. And so now that's what I have. And it works okay. I could probably not do anything else to this. And it'll work fine just like this. So uh, I am going to change it. But this is one of the improvements I made on my Legacy. And this is only one. When you see some of the other things I've done, if you own the Legacy, I think you're going to want to come back and look at some of these other changes. If you don't own the Legacy, keep in mind what we're talking about here. Because as I show you how to build your own, because we're going to build a small version of this. Probably on the scale of a 12 by 12, but we'll see. It partly depends on what you guys want, and then we'll see what we can do. And you can build it using these same principles as I show you about this machine. You'll be able to take those and apply it to building your own machine when we get done. So I appreciate you stopping by. If you like this video, please say so. If somebody else has a legacy machine or thinking about wanting something like that, let them know. Share it with them. So... But thank you for stopping by, and please come back again soon, okay? Bye.